I'm Dr. Zeev Haskell, and I'm very excited to be here with my good friend and colleague, Professor Yuji Okuno, and we're going to talk a little bit about MSK embolization today. Yuji, it's always great to see you. We've yeah. known each other for a long time. Yeah. Um, everybody's known a lot about uh, GAE, genicular artery embolization, for osteoarthritis because there's been a lot of conversation from your earliest papers where we all thought this was crazy, and in fact, you opened an entire new door into treating very debilitating pain of osteoarthritis, which in the U.S. is just tens of millions of people. Um, but you're bringing some new and interesting results in treating this neovascularity that causes pain specific to this meeting, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. In this meeting, I have received the award of uh, excellence and innovation in the IR was uh, due to the, my earlier work for the knee embolization for knee osteoarthritis in 2015. Your work in uh, MSK, musculoskeletal mm. embolization, has a long track record at CIRCE. Yes. A lot of publications and also prior prestigious awards, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I just uh, received the award this year, but we have actually started the clinical trial from 2012, and uh, by using a temporary embolic material. And sometimes we also use a permanent material, and, uh, but, and, uh, and, uh, and we increase uh, indication, not only for uh, knee osteoarthritis, but also the shoulder or elbow, but uh, yeah, now, 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 the most of IR uh, physician knows about the GAE is uh, and uh, relatively wide, wide accepted, and uh, there is a concern about using the permanent embolic material for uh, the joint embolization. Uh, there are three aspects for the safety concern. So. Um when you started this, you were using a very unusual agent, which was yeah, yeah. imipenem yeah. and essentially an antibiotic that's yeah. not on label for use, but because of its crystalline form, was providing a transient embolization. Yeah. And I visited you, mm. and you were using a very unusual technique of a proximal injection yeah. because you knew that it would dissolve quickly. Yes. But that's not possible with a permanent embolic yes. where the risk profile to causing... Um, skin and yeah. muscle and pain mm. is very, very different, right? Yes, yes. So we have to change the technique uh, when between the two. The when we do the temporary, using temporary embolic material or permanent embolic material. And the imipanem is a very quickly recognized in the normal vessels. Uh, but still work as an embolic effect to the inflamed vessels. So we can shower from the proximal point, and we know that it doesn't cause the matter such an increased pain or nerve damage or cutaneous change. But uh, if we use a permanent uh, or longer uh, material, uh, so we, we have to super select, and uh, it takes a longer time, and, uh, but still some uh, possibility to non-target embolization. And you've done some of those studies comparing imipenem to permanent embolics and have seen some real safety differences, right? Yes. So efficacy data was similar, similar. And, uh, but safety data is obvious different in our group. Yeah. What kind of examples of safety issues did you see? Yeah. So the, around 50% of skin ulcer, skin ulcer, ulcer more frequently is skin color discoloration. Yeah, uh, discoloration is mild, uh, but sometimes, uh, sometimes patients develop a uh, deep ulcer. It's very rare, very rare, but uh, it. But also some chronic pain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which has gone on for some time. Yeah, yeah. I think this, to me, is one of the biggest concerns when you have a specialized procedure mm. um, done by the leading experts. You can control your outcome, but when it starts to be done by the broad population, yeah. the safety profile becomes some of yeah. the most important thing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So I think we agree that imipenem on a worldwide basis is not, not to succeed. It could never happen in the U.S. Yeah. So there's been a search for a resorbable embolic. Yeah. And you've presented some data here 
mm. on some some uh, uh, a large cohort with uh, resorbable. So tell us about that. Yes. So so due to safety co- concern, we want to develop uh, use uh, temporary embolic material, which can mimic or which can affect uh, effective and uh, safely p- perform the procedure safely and uh, to spread this technique. And uh, uh, we performed uh, more than 200 cases by using uh, zeratin made as uh, temporary bioresorbable uh, microsphere. So these are calibrated gel form microspheres of uh, 100 micron? Yeah, the size is around 100 to 300 micron. Mm-hmm. So, the, our target is such a diameter. And uh, the resorbability is uh, on the bench, on the bench. A four hour or two eight hour resorbability in a bench. So, uh, the bench resorbability was actually longer than the in vivo human resorbability, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, we don't know the exact uh, resorbable time or em- embolic time, but uh, it's relatively longer compared to imipenem. Yeah. So this is Nexphere F, which yeah. is a South yeah. Korean uh, company that also has particles with longer resorption for uh, uterine artery embolization. But mm-hmm. this specific fast formulation mm-hmm. that is also available in the EU, um, more focused on musculoskeletal, right? Yes, yeah. And that's the agent that you've reported on 200 patients. Yeah. Now, what about the mix of the patients? What mm-hmm. joints were you treating? Yes, uh, we treated uh, not only the knee osteoarthritis, but also the sports injuries, including the tennis elbow and the jumper's knee, Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis, uh, such a very common uh, chronic fa- painful disease. And also uh, do a shoulder. Uh, this one I know, frozen shoulder. I had it yeah. for eight months. Uh, it really limits uh, mm. because of pain. Um, but uh, I think that this group of 200 was less of the knee and more of the other joints, right? Yes. The most frequent uh, number was uh, uh, 77 in tennis elbow. Tell us about some of the results that you saw in the different joints in this abstract. Ah, okay. So in tennis elbow or jumper's knee, it's not a knee or arthritis, jumper's knee or tennis elbow or Achilles tendonitis, we notice the uh, efficacy is better than imipenem. And what does that mean to the patient when you say efficacy? What do they experience and mm. what kind of durability? How quickly do they have results? How happy are they? How long does it last? Yeah. So we, we, uh, we analyze uh, one month, three months, and six months. One month data is similar to imipenem, but six, uh, three months and six months, the next pair group is a much uh, decreased uh, pain indicating that uh, maintain or ability uh, to maintain the uh, effect, effectiveness is uh, longer or the better. So this is fascinating because we're talking about a rapidly dissolving yeah. material yeah. for transient embolization yeah. with a several month durable, mm. meaningful improvement for, for yeah. patients, for pain, for people who are suffering. I couldn't lift my shoulder for oh, yeah. months. Um, and the question is, mm. why does it last? And I think you have some insights from some of your early work in, uh, in rabbit inflammatory vessels that shows a differential result in embolizing normal mm. versus inflamed vessels. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we did the uh, rabbit model um, fine, using a fine microangiography, and uh, we, can, uh, we can directly observe the uh, behavior or the real-time change of blood flow after infusing the temporary embolic material into the normal tissue and the inflammation tissue. In normal tissue, the, during the 90 minutes observation, after infusing imipenem or Nexphere F, the capillary gradually uh, recovered the flow of blood flow in capillary and gr- gradually recovered. But, com- but uh, in inflammation vessels, similarly try to recover for the first 10 to 20 m- minutes, 
But after that, gradually decreased the vessels and the blood flow of vessels. It means that the temporary embolic event can cause the different reaction in the normal tissue and the inflammation tissue. Inflammatory t tissue, the vessels are dying during the 90 minutes. So, so this is really the, the sort of the, the $10 million question because mm. results are results, but people always want to feel like they understand why, mm. you know, even though the data is the data, the patient doesn't care about the method, yeah. only the results, yeah. but we still want to understand. And this, mm. this, this animal model perhaps gives us some early insight that the inflammatory neo vessels mm. um, are different in some way. Maybe they're leaky, maybe they have a different prothrombostate, a mm. different structure, but mm. they respond differently to this mm. agent yeah. and they have a more persistent injury and thrombosis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Even with a transient agent that has disappeared for a long Disappear. time. Disappear. Yeah. Yeah. So in the sports injury, it's not a progressive disease. And the knee osteoarthritis this is a progressive disease. So age, uh, during age, they can uh, progress and... Uh, with continued cartilage loss and bone uh, overgrowth. Yeah. But in the sports injuries, once we have improved the tissue condition, there are uh, self, uh, self healing process and uh, the sickness of the tendon is improved. improved. So you've looked at patients who have had terrible tennis epicondylitis mm -hmm. and you've seen that tendon health mm. has stabilized and maybe even improved, improved. with yeah. treating that, uh, yeah. that, that event. Now, how many of those patients had had other types of therapies like injections before coming to you for this? Our patients usually receive uh, two or three types of conservative treatment, including rest or physical therapy and uh, steroid injection. It must be this. And uh, also shockwave therapy or PRP. But reliability is not so high of this treatment yeah but sports injury they want to recover the sports activity as uh are you as quickly as possible as quick, yeah as quick as possible i think you've also mm -hmm. treated some professional athletes yeah yeah actually 2021 uh, we uh, had the tokyo olympic olympic and then we have a uh, three uh, gold medalists who have previously treated by us by treatment yeah one a uh, sports player, a gold medalist, or softball player, a female softball player. Uh, they have one year history of uh, knee, uh, knee pain, uh, the medial knee pain, and uh, they ask me to treat, and by using next, we treat them by using next pair F, and uh, very quickly improved, and uh, no pain, and uh, six months before the Olympic, and, uh, and they can quickly uh, return to the That's amazing. Do you think they're going to be in the Paris Olympics? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe <same. laughs> it's too early to tell. So um, uh, this is pretty remarkable because we're talking about the potential for higher safety profile in broad use because of a reduced risk of overembolization. Yeah. We're talking about a broader indication, not just um, arthritis, as you said, a progressive disease in pre-surgical, non-surgical patients who are trying to avoid it. Mm -hmm. But we're now talking about overuse injuries that yeah. may be able to be interrupted, like adhesive capsulitis, shoulders. I don't know what jumper's knee is, but I don't want it. <laughs> but in talking about Achilles uh, tendon and such yeah. as well, and that may be a completely different population of people that we can help. Yes, yes. So they are relatively um, younger, and the uh, activity level is high, demand is high, and... Uh, we don't want to make uh, numbness or uh, skin color, skin ulcer or strong pain to, to such uh, act high, higher active patients. So, so I think the temporary embolic material is the best choice for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you continue to pioneer in this area and we're all following in your lead for guidance and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully to walk in those shoes as well as you show us the way. Thank you. Thank you, Simon.